you're watching Nevada Business Chronicles. Take a journey with us to see the innovative businesses that put Nevada on the business map. Connecting you with the businesses, events, and organizations that bring innovation and prosperity to the Nevada area, please welcome your host, Mitch Burney. We're here at Blind Dog Coffee with Yulia and Ian Berry, proprietors and roastmasters. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Blind Dog Coffee, there's history and a real meaningful story how this company got its start, if you wouldn't mind sharing that. It really started about the age of two for my father. He had a cancer called retinoblastoma. And at that point in today, the survival rate was extremely low. Um, they, my grandparents took him down to Stanford, which was about the only place that knew about retinoblastoma. And the left eye had to be immediately removed. And the right eye was able to be heavily radiated. For the next 46 years, he's able to see until he was 48. At that point of 48, he's driving down the road and realized that his vision was starting to be impaired, just like you were drinking. And he thought that he wasn't drinking, but he thought, oh, I need to go get my eyesight checked. Called his doctor, went in for an eye checkup, and that was the end of his eyesight. It was starting to deteriorate. The radiation was starting to deteriorate the retina and the optical nerve in the eye. And from then on, he had a year and a half to learn how to do something new. And that is where the coffee from Blind Dog Coffee started was he had a year and a half with friends in the business to call, to test, to sample, go to classes, and learn everything that he needed to learn about the coffee industry. And from there, he was able to roast and start planning out his business. Blind Dog Coffee was really gonna be a roastery with a bunch of coffee houses. That was right before the crash of 2008. And so he went from that to take me to the closest grocery store so I can see if I can sell a bag of coffee. And at that point, he wasn't even really roasting the product. He just knew what he was going to do. Went into Scaleri's, and Scaleri's gave him his first opportunity to sell coffee. Went to Whole Foods. Whole Foods said, go ahead. And once he had Scaleri's and Whole Foods, he went to Rayleigh's and Rayleigh says, yeah, if you've got it in those stores, we'll put it in ours. And this was all before he even had a product to sell. Wow. The roasting of the coffee really just takes our senses. And with that, he was able to take about a year and a half before he was fully blind of learning the different processes and what happens in the roasting. And once he was able to roast coffee, well then Blind Dog Coffee was created. Right now we're in a process where it's gonna bottom out. It means that the heat and the beans are gonna become the same temperature at a certain point. It takes about a minute and a half for it to bottom out. And then we'll just make certain adjustments as that bottoms out, the process changes. We don't want too much air in the beginning, but then as it gets later on the roast, we want more air. It'll help clean out the roasting. There's multiple ways to do a technique. My dad's technique created was doing your develop in the middle of the, of the roast. So as I go through here and I get to certain temperatures, I have to adjust my airflow, my damper. That way the developing of the coffee is developed right. With all of this here is, this is just roasting air. It's allowing me to adjust how much flow for, so the smoke doesn't sit and accumulate in the roaster and that way we don't get a smoky flavor. For certain roasts we want that smoky flavor like the Death Alley French Roast. I won't adjust my air as much. You can already start smelling the fruit. You can smell the vinegar and the fruit on that one. Ooh. Right now you hear the first crack. That loud noise, that rumbling of that crack. That's the first initial crack of the roasting process. That's when the bean is starting to expand. Now we're, we're dry, there's no more moisture in the bean. That is left at the first stage of mylar, which is about 310. It's when your bean starts going from a green to an orangish color.
Right here what I'm looking for when I take these beans and I crack them open and look, I'm just looking for evenness of the roast inside throughout the bean. And then what I make sure is a nice roast of bean should be able to crack nice and easily. When you look in there, we're gonna have a nice, even, dark cocoa look. Nice dark roasted product. Right now the coffee is cooling. This keeps it rotating, that way nothing is set and builds up the heat, continues on roasting. And then what you hear going on as well as is there's a fan, and that fan is sucking out any extra hot air. That way we can cool within four to six minutes. After our roasting process is cooled and ready to go into the next step, it goes to the distoner. And what the distoner does, is the distoner takes out objects like this. And from here, the coffee will be stored in here for a day or so, no more, because we don't want any air to get to it. Then it goes to the packaging. And from here, it'll be bagged and sealed and then sent to you lovely customers. Today, I'm proud to say that we are in Costco's, distributed through U.S. Foods and First Choice, as well as Walmart's. And my passion and my goal is to fulfill my father's dream and making this company a global coffee company. And keep your eye out for Blind Dog Coffee's first coffee house. And as my dad would say, can't wait to see ya. Ian, the story is powerful, mm -hmm. just as it is. But what makes this even more impressive is the vision of Blind Dog Coffee to give back, if you yes. wouldn't mind sharing what that looks like. To start off that conversation a little bit, you know, Angel Kiss Foundation was the first Northern Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation. And what that evolved into was Northern Nevada Children Cancer Foundation. And that's our give back. We try to do as much as we can to help them in any way. We've got a monthly program that we ship them coffee and they utilize it to their families in need as well as they created a tree in their office of areas and people who donate a certain amount. Since the beginning of Blind Dog Coffee, my dad wanted to make sure that he gave back. So he tied himself with Angel Kiss Foundation, which was the original Northern Nevada Children Cancer Foundation. So halfway through that, they changed the name and we just tied ourselves to that. And as we tied ourselves to that, when you buy a portion of Blind Dog Coffee, we donate a portion of our proceeds to Northern Nevada Children's Cancer Foundation. That's our way of giving back and we just want to continue growing that to be one of Northern Nevada Children's Cancer Foundation's biggest sponsors. Tanner's Roast is a tribute roast to a little boy who had the same cancer as my father, which is retinoblastoma. The tie for Tanner and Blind Dog Coffee was his grandparents' house was behind my parents' property. And that little boy would come on a regular basis and hang out with my father. Um, Tanner was about three years old when my parents met Tanner. And they knew him for the next two years. This roast was created in his memory and his family has asked us to keep this roast alive in his honor. That's Ian and Yulia Berry. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you us. for coming. Great Thank coffee, so great cause. And if you want to get your order in, you can give them a call at 775-265-2176 or visit them at blinddogcoffee.com or find them at one of their distributors. Absolutely. Thanks again so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for coming in once again. It was a pleasure. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles. There are going to be a lot of our viewers that know this extraordinary business that's been in Northern Nevada, in Reno, in Midtown for more than two decades. And others are going to be very excited to learn about the history here. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the Melting Pot World Emporium, how it's got its start. 
Uh, Monique and I got together while we were working at a cafe here in town, which no longer exists, called Du Grenet. A lot of people know that that establishment because it was a very iconic place in its day. It's been closed for about 10 years. But Monique and I got together working there in 1993. Mm -hmm. um, June. June 1993. 19th. 19th at their annual party. <laughs> That's true. And we, we, st we were going to a lot of festivals at that time, music festivals, and we decided that we would start our own vending business. And so we started vending at music festivals. And we did that for two seasons. And then we opened the Melting Pot in 1996 on Wells Avenue. It was in a small space, 600 square feet. We were there for three years. We continued vending at that during that time. And Monique was still working full time at UPS, and I was waiting part time. Part time, but and I was still waiting there. tables. Mm -hmm. um, we were there for three years, and then we moved it to our second location, which was Virginia and Taylor, right up the street. And we were there for seven years. Uh, and then and in between that, yeah. we went to India. We did. We got to do some traveling. Mm -hmm. India, Nepal, Thailand. Mm -hmm. February. Um, yeah, which is just kind of really helped push the store in that direction with the Eastern feel that it has. Yeah. A friend of ours who was a, a customer, she invited us to her wedding in India. And that was an amazing opportunity. So we were able to travel in 99 to go to India for about a month. And she chaperoned us all around. We went to all kinds of different regions. And that was such an amazing time for us because we love that culture, very attracted to the East Indian um, art, um, all the deities. That was always our gravitational pull, actually. Um, and so we were there for about a month. Like I said, we went mm -hmm. to her wedding. It was it a little was side trip to Nepal. A side that trip, trip to Nepal, mm -hmm. which was incredible. Yeah. The sweetest people on the planet. Um, tiny, super tiny, <laughs> um, and very adorable. And uh, it was a great great opportunity for us we, we we bought two giant duffel bags full of things and stuffed them to the brim and brought some of those things back with us when we returned from our trip to India the space up the street at Virginia and Taylor was available and we moved our business from Wells to Virginia we were there for seven years um, during that time we became the ticket outlet for Burning Man which helped expand our business greatly as Burning Man was growing so were we uh, seven years into it, into that, ten years into it, we moved to this location where we are now. Um, I tried, um, I love the space I saw for rent sign and uh, I immediately called on it and I got, and he said, well, you gotta send in your letter of intention. So I wrote my letter and sent it in and then a week or two later, I'm like, hey, what's up? And he's like, oh, you didn't get it and you didn't want to sign a lease option. So I'm like, Sure I did. What do you mean I didn't want it? So I didn't get it. This uh, Thai furniture place came in. Beautiful giant statuary thing. Never opened. One year. Never opened. I would come by and look and see because I was very attracted to those things. Never opened. One year later. Sign in the window. Hey, it's me again. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember you, the girl from the melting pot. I'm like, yeah, I want your space. Okay. And we worked it out. We got in and... Here we are, 10 years later, in this amazing space. Definitely the best smelling part of the whole story. <laughs> it is. There's a lot of incense over here in the spiritual nook. Yeah, especially stuff from India, Nepal, Thailand. Um, we have sage and um, Palo Santo and all kinds of things that smell really nice. And that makes the whole, whole store smell really nice, yeah. of course. Yeah, it's one of the, the trademark smells of this place. For sure. Very peaceful, very serene in this area. It is, yeah. And this is, you know, it's kind of the, the spiritual center of the store as far as a lot of the Eastern stuff, um, Buddhist and Hindu and a lot of statues and Tibetan prayer flags and singing bowls and bells and tinctures and mala beads and didgeridoos and um, God, just on you and have on. A little yeah, of everything here. Prayer cushions and yeah, this it's a really neat part of the store. I can't wait to show them the next stop on our journey. Yeah, right next door, the 18 and over smoke shop section. Well, let's take yeah. a look. Okay. Your business model for your smoke shop, completely unique to others. Yeah, you know, I want it to be another part of our business that's accessible to everybody. Um, I want people to be able to come in here and have their questions answered professionally and that we can stand behind what we sell and understand what we're selling and help people get what's going to work best for them, you know, people who are looking for something in a smoke shop. A lot classier than other smoke shops in our community. 
Tell us a little bit about the diversity of products that you carry here. Well, we carry a, a lot of different hand-blown glass uh, pipes and water pipes and things that are made locally and from a lot of our, our glass blower friends that we do work with in, in Oregon and in Washington and different areas that stuff comes from. We carry a lot of detox to help people with different detoxification deadlines and needs they may have and uh, everything from rolling papers and hemp and rice and flax and uh, undyed paper and clear papers and lots of little accessories and things you might need to to make pieces work or little pull bowls for water pipes or down stems or things like that. Um, we do a lot kratom. Uh, kratom is a is a natural pain reliever from Southeast Asia. Most of it comes from Thailand. People use this very successfully for for pain management and inflammation. It can help with sleep and anxiety and it's wonderful actually. These are very interesting. Looks like you oh, sell yeah. soda but <laughs> right the can saves. Yeah those are kind of an old smoke shop classic or standard too. Those have been around as long as I can remember. But yeah, those are secret safes and things that could could disguise your valuables and, and go places where people wouldn't expect to find your valuables stashed away. We have shisha, which is for the, the kind of the eastern hookahs and tobacco, big tobacco water pipes. A huge selection of vaping supplies, but that's not just for tobacco here. No, exactly. Yeah, we have a lot of handheld vaporizers. Um, some tabletops, although they're not as popular these days, um, and you know, dry flower vaporizers and concentrate vaporizers. Um, a lot of uh, accessory batteries that will take screw-on adapters that could take all kinds of different, from dry flower to concentrates to e-juice. Now that everyone's got their groove going on, what do we get to look at next? Let's check out the novelty section. Let's do it. Okay. These are the greatest cards I've ever seen. You have a lot of great gift giving ideas for the holidays, for birthdays, for any occasion. We do, it's so diverse. We have so much fun stuff, the cards and the journals and the antique replica light bulbs and the books and keychains and all the, all the stuff that's kind of remnants from Burning Man because we're so big in a Burning Man. We've got so much cool stuff from that season year round. Great yeah. gift giving place. Absolutely. Who's this lovely lady? Well, this is Naomi. She's been with us for a long time. And at night, when we close the doors, I think all the mannequins, I think they have a party. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm, I'm pretty sure. At the melting pot, people can come in and they can get their groove on. Absolutely. They can get their holiday on. Yep. They can get their steampunk on. Absolutely. They can get their Eskimo on. Yeah. Mayor Eskimo. We they, can work that out. They can get their costume on. It's true. Such a great, fun atmosphere. Great clothing line. Yeah, we do. We have lots of amazing, incredible lines of clothing. Very festive, very casual, very uh, across the map. All the different genres that you can imagine. We carry a lot of clothing.
The Melting Pot is such a perfect name for us because this is a combination of Monique and myself, all of our favorite stuff and stuff from all over the world. On our business card, one of our mantras is love, respect, unity, doorway to the world. That pretty much covers it. That's our whole mission statement. Big changes coming. Yeah, yeah, we're excited. We're putting a new facade on our building. This is a photo of what it's gonna look like. It's an ad that we're running right now, but this is what it's actually gonna look like. And so it's gonna be a big upgrade for us, uh, a really neat addition to Midtown, I think. I'm really excited about it. You're gonna be the landmark of Midtown. What are you talking about? I hope so. I hope so. We've been on the street for 17 years. Here you are, Mitch. Some love beads. Can't go out the door without those. Thank you so much for having me here today. It's been such a pleasure. Un unbelievable. Yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you, Mitch. Thank you, really Mitch. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. That was really fun. We're located at 1049 South Virginia Street, one block north of Vassar. Our phone number is 775-322-9445, or you can find us online at meltingpotworldemporium.com. Thanks, Mitch. Was Thanks great for having, having me. Okay. I loved every minute of it. <laughs> For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles. Today we're visiting one of our local boutiques with Monique and Eric Barron with the Neon Dragonfly eclectic not electric right eclectic boutique. yeah the name on the on the awning outside is the neon dragonfly eclectic boutique but it does kind of look like electric and people drive by and see all the lamps in the window and that kind of sticks in their brain and we do have lamps we have a lot of lamps very cool eclectic lamps. eclectic well, creating new history for our community you're also preserving a piece of history for our future generations here yeah, we, when we did the remodel on the building, we purchased the building about 10 years ago and it was the yoga shack for a couple years. And then when she moved on, we did the remodel and we transitioned it into a retail space. And at that time, we completely opened up the front of the building because it was just cinder block. And we put in these big picture windows, uh, this exposed duct heating and air conditioning system. We tore down this, this wall that was right here where we're standing, which was separated the, the two different studios. Um, we put this big awning on the front. Um, which the frame was repurposed from another older building here in town, and then we, we, we had a new awning made for it, it. reskinned it. Um, so it, it retains its original charm, it's got creaky floors, and, and it's a really neat space, but then it's got some modern aspects which, which give it more curb appeal and uh, make, it, make it the eclectic boutique that it is. You have taken great pride in preserving some of the history for our community and future generations while bringing a new history to our community as well. In the mid-60s, it, it was a home of a dance teacher. She taught ballet and she added on to her home and this became the Reno Ballet Arts Academy. Um, and it was that for many years. We've actually had customers that have come in and say, I took ballet here and it's pretty neat. It's important that we all feel comfortable in what we wear. There's a couple things that we need. It's food, clothing, and shelter. It is really important for us to recognize and honor women in all their beauty, shape, size. I will never compromise on quality. We do a lot of fair trade. We try to buy from conscious companies. I've had one of these mugs for oh, at least 10 years. They're all inlaid and there's just really mm -hmm. a great feel. What are these yeah. bottles about? They're beautiful. These are awesome. Uh, this is a local friend of mine who, who has these etched here in Reno. And uh, it's, it's a water bottle or whatever, but usually people use these for waters. And it's just a positive, the chakra colors, but it puts positive um, energy into your water. Maybe there's a little truth to the electric boutique. Mm, really, Captain Obvious? <laughs> Actually, we do. We have a lot of diverse uh, lighting here. We have some that are vintage, some that are modern, very you know, beautiful and pretty and feminine, and some that are more like you know masculine. So it's a, quite a, a big array of different kinds of lighting. We've used ballet bars all around the store. So these bars here are holding all these lamps and, and these scarves. We have another ballet bar that we're using for that as well. And these ballet bars are really old and there's a lot of energy behind it. And uh, it's kind of cool to repurpose that sort of thing. 
We're going to get to see some beautiful women wearing your beautiful clothes today. Yes, we are. We're going to see some amazing outfits on some beautiful women. Well, let's go. Let's go. One of the other things I'm sure is gonna bring a lot of women down here, jewelry, jewelry, jewelry. Oh, and more jewelry. Yeah, should we talk about the jewelry? Should we, you know, let's talk about jewelry. So jewelry, yes, I love jewelry. Um, and we do have a nice selection of all kinds of different beautiful, fine uh, sterling and gemstone jewelry. We have some sort of um, playful kind of um, costumes sort of jewelry, but a lot of like really neat pieces. One of the things I'm present to is like you said before, everything is the highest quality. This is just nicer than you see at other places. And again, for whether it's a gift to yourself or a gift for somebody else, definitely top shopping list place to go. Most definitely, yeah. There's some, some really neat pieces. These these are really interesting. My friend Crystal, Crystalyn, she makes these, um, out of actual orchids so these this picture like this orchid corresponds to the piece that she made it like the actual flower that it used to be i'm not sure how the process works but then what is left with is the flower goes away and then the cast of the metal is left Incredible. where the flower was so it's pretty awesome I've had such a wonderful time at the Neon Dragonfly Eclectic Boutique. For those people who have driven down the street all this time thinking you'd said Electric Boutique. <laughs> and you can find them at 214 California Avenue, adjacent to the Nevada Museum of Art. Find them on the internet at theneondragonfly.com or give them a call at 775-737-9780. Thanks again so much for having me. Yes, likewise, Mitch. That was a really good time. I uh, appreciate you coming down and uh, doing the story. Enjoyed every minute. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. For information on becoming a guest on our show, contact us at info at nvbusinesschronicles.com. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week at the same time for more from Nevada Business Chronicles.